What is up, nerds? It's Paul at Radio Free Hammer Hall. Today, we are going to talk about prospector units. This is an interesting unit class that has been starting to get more and more attention. They've kind of always been a thing, but didn't really even have a name for it. Uh, Vince Venturello has started calling them prospectors. I think that's a really good way to describe them. So let's jump into it. What even are these units? So their main role is going to be for grabbing battle tactics, uh, grabbing objectives in your opponent's backfield, taking advantage of random opportunities that happen to come up. Uh, you can use them as chaff, steal objectives, just extra bodies on objectives, uh, hit things in the backfield, tie something up in combat so that it uh, can't charge or something along those lines. That's the basic idea of what they do. What are the characteristics of them? They're things that are cheap. And by cheap, I mean like bottom of the barrel cheap. You want these things to be like under 150 points, preferably more like 100. Um, they're best if they can fly. They need to have high movement and or movement tricks of some kind, whether it's a deep strike, an ambush, um, you know, retreat out of combat abilities, uh, you know, run and shoot, run and charge. Uh, and it also, you want them to be preferably useful for other things other than just flying around and harassing and grabbing objectives. Um, these are really valuable, and um, the armies that have these right now definitely have an advantage, I think. So before I jump into the individual units, I want to just briefly talk about this uh, collection of armies that don't really have good choices here. Um, all of these really suffer from either having just broadly low movement across the army or simply not having anything that is cheap and mobile. So uh, Fire Slayers, everybody's moving four inches. They do have some tunneling tricks that they can do, but it's not really how you're going to win, want to invest those tunneling guys. Ideneth Deepkin, they do have some fast stuff, but it's definitely just over the point of... Uh, the price point that I'd be looking at. Iron Jaws, uh, their only really fast thing is the Gorgruntas, and they are pricey, and you really want to be getting those guys into combat, not hanging out on the flanks and uh, grabbing, uh, you know, you don't want to be using them for battle tactics so much, at least not those kinds of battle tactics. Lumineth Realm Lords, also just suffering from... Uh, not having anything that is in the cheaper category. They have quite a bit that's fast, but not really stuff that's cheap. Cruel Boys, just nothing fast in the army, really. Um, Maggotkin of Nurgle, um, you might have like a little bit of a trick here if you use Affliction Cyst and throw your uh, Plague Drones across the battlefield onto the enemy end um, at the start of the game. But those are expensive. It's a lot of an investment to do that. And uh, so it, it's not really just good to have those units dedicated to prospecting. Uh, Nighthaunt. Nighthaunt's an interesting one because like the whole army is relatively quick and has a bunch of movement tricks. And um, there's plenty of stuff that's relatively cheap. But you don't have like the really fast stuff that is also cheap. So they're going to be able to grab those battle tactics pretty easily on their own. Uh, part of why they are performing so well currently. Um, but they are uh, they don't really have like this role in particular. Um, Ossiarch Bone Reapers, again, they, they're suffering from not having anything cheap. Uh, Sons of Bayamat, like this is just antithetical to what that army does. Uh, and Sylvaneth, another army that just has issues with cheap stuff, but uh, they do have a lot of movement tricks uh, that are going to be able to potentially get you there anyway uh, with other units. So that is our no good options collection. Uh, so 10 of these guys out of 24 different armies. Uh, and... Some honorable mention uh, units here that I thought I would hit that these are not great choices to be using 
for this, but in these armies, they're kind of the best that you've got. Uh, so I didn't want to include these in the list of things that, you know, armies that just don't have any options. These are just options that are not really entirely fitting into the archetype, but they're pretty close. Blissbarb archers in Slanesh, those are, uh, they're a little bit above the price point that I really want to pay, but they are very useful for other things in the army, and the thing they do is ranged attacks, so it kind of couples well with this. So they're mainly just expensive. Uh, same thing with the Stormcast Prosecutors, uh, almost the exact same story. Um, and Stormcast can really couple that with their deep strike capabilities, but also in Stormcast, just having that deep strike going on is uh, incredibly valuable and can really do this job anyway. Prosecutors are also suffering from ether wings just being a better option in this role because uh, they're so much cheaper. Uh, in Caradron Overlords, you got your Sky Wardens. It, again, the exact same thing where they've got good ranged attacks and they're fast. They're just a bit pricey. Uh, in Cities of Sigmar, you got your Dark Riders, another one that's a little expensive and does uh, a decent amount of range damage. Moving on to ones that are a little bit more of a challenge, uh, Claws of Karnak and Night Runners and Wildcore Hunters. Uh, all of these have like a pre-game move, but their actual movement characteristic isn't that high. So they can kind of jump out of the gate and get up the board a bit, but then they're going to be a bit challenged later on when you, uh, you know, are trying to do more mobile things with them, but, you know, they can still definitely be useful. Frost Sabers, like these are guys are nice and cheap. They move nine, they don't fly, they don't really have any other movement tricks. They do have a hero that they can like ambush with, but that ends up being an expensive investment for what you're trying to do. Um, so like they're the best thing that you've got in Ogre Maw Tribes, but uh, it's not like the best option ever. So all of these, I would say, like, these are all serviceable units in this role, particularly looking at Bliss Barb Archers, Prosecutors, Sky Wardens, and Dark Riders as really being things that just have, they, they've got another role as well as it being like a mobile shooting unit, and the Prosecutors can even do pretty well in melee combat. So they give you some interesting options. A lot of them are either suffering from being a bit too expensive or uh, having another option in the army that's just better. All right, moving on to our like A and B tier choices, like our solid things that uh, you're very happy to have in your army. There's a couple of these things, uh, the Pterodon Riders and Crypt Flares, that um, they're great because you can take them in two model units instead of the three and it drops their price point quite a bit. The Crypt Flares go down to 110 for two for a 12 inch flying unit. The Pterodons go to 70 for a 14 inch fly unit. That is um, a lot of movement for them for not a lot of points. So they get a decent investment in there in those and leave you a lot of other points in the army to do other things. Uh, in Gloom Spike Gits, your Spider Riders, they are actually like surprisingly good for this. They, uh, I believe they also have some shooting attacks and they can move across terrain as if they had fly. They move 10 inches and they're 110 points. Not a bad investment for something in this role. Uh, in Stormcast, you've got the Ether Wings, 12 inch flying unit for 90 points. Uh, it's hard to beat that for real. Um, it's a great unit. Same with like the Pterodon Riders. It's just, they're real fast and real cheap. Uh, in your Disciples of Zeech, you got your Screamers. They fly 14 inches for 100 points. And then uh, in your Soul Blight Grave Lords, you've got Felbats, which are a 12 inch fly, and they can retreat without penalty, which almost puts them in S tier, I think. Maybe they could nudge there, uh, but I think they're a little. Uh, expensive for that if I'm remembering correctly. I didn't put their points down here and I should have, but I did not. All right, are we ready for the S tier choices? The best in class. All right. Chaos Furies. These guys are fantastic. 
they move 12 inches, they fly, they're 110 points, and when they activate in combat, they can retreat, which is very valuable for a couple of reasons. Now, it's only on a three up, so it's two thirds of the time that they're able to do it, but that can like effectively double, like more than double their movement that turn, right? Like you move 12, you charge, then you retreat 12 out of combat. So that's somewhere north of 24 inch move in uh, one turn potentially. In our um, Seraphon, we've got the Hunters of Haunchy with the Dart Pipes. So they have a pretty good shooting attack. They're only 80 points. They move eight, which is like not horrible, but they deep strike anywhere on the board. And that is really useful. They can just pop into the enemy lines and pop off some pretty decent shooting attacks and just grab those uh, battle tactics uh, and you know hunt stuff in the backfield for really cheap. Uh, you know, being in the backfield like that is very valuable because it makes your opponent devote resources to them to it like in the wrong direction of the battle and um you know it, for going after something that's not that valuable points wise like it's not a, a valuable trade um the canari uh both the heart renders and life takers in uh daughters of cain uh 12 inch fly they both deep strike uh the only real difference here the heart renders are uh, shooting oriented and then after they shoot they can move d6 inches then your life takers they do the same thing except it's with combat they can move d6 after combat so they can fly in hit and then fly away all of these really good um chaos furies i have just been loving the canari have been a bane of everyone for a long time they've been really good forever um, for you know, this very reason and them just having some solid uh, attacks as well so that they really become a thorn in everyone's side. Um, so I love this class of units. It is just, um, I feel like this is like the fun tactical stuff that really can give you an edge in many situations. All of these units, very versatile. Um, you know, these four choices are some of the best units in the game just for their versatility how fast they are having a little bit of punch and just generally being either annoying or scoring a lot of points for you. Well, that's going to be it guys. I thought this would just be a fun one to do and I'll talk to you all later.